teardown time. This is the Raspberry Pi Pico 2. Uh, it has a new bit of silicon from Raspberry Pi, the RP2350, uh, a custom designed chip. It has a quad SPI flash, it looks like, and uh, some sort of voltage regulator here. We're going to take these semiconductors off the uh, board and uh, take a look at the silicon die and see what we can sort down. So here's the top metal of the uh, Raspberry Pi 2350. Uh, clearly you can see it's made by Raspberry Pi because they've uh, decided to put their logo here uh, on a top metal layer. Um, on the majority of the chip it's covered with uh, what's known as the power distribution network. Uh, all these items here that I'm circling uh, basically is the digital area. And if you just zoom in you can actually see that you um, get a, a connection from one of the pins. Here's another pin. It comes in, you can see it runs down like a finger. Uh, one of these will be uh, ground, of course, and the other will be, uh, as you might expect, the power pins. In fact, actually, this pattern is so uh, apparent, um, it's going to be fairly easy to actually start orienting the chip and determining what we're looking at. Okay, what else can we see? Um, just looking at the upper uh, section here in pink, uh, where there is no power distribution network, uh, that's because uh, these parts of the chip uh, are probably macros, which have analog type functions, and they wouldn't do so well if you place some uh, power distribution on top of that. Uh, looking at the logo from the Raspberry Pi, you can see around it um, there is a, a block sitting below. It must not be a very high speed because that metal otherwise would affect it. Um, if we compare this to the uh, previous Pi Pico die, uh, this photograph here, if I zoom in, you can see the shape of this block here. Um, and if we come back to the uh, previous um, the Pico 2 die, uh, you can see, of course, it's the exact same block. Um, now, that makes sense. Uh, Pico uh, are uh, done on the same process node, apparently. So, lots of reuse. The Pico 2 very much is uh, an incremental design. All right, what else can we see? There's die markings, which are very helpful. Uh, A0 means it's a uh, first uh, design success straight out. Uh, no revisions required. Uh, although I see the word uh, RP4, I'm only aware of two Picos, so I'm not sure if there's a numbering scheme. They had some complete failures or something. Uh, or they have some other designs cooking. Who knows? Uh, 2023 copyright. That's uh, pretty good. Uh, it's now, of course, mid-2024. and We have it in our hands. Um, this is done in a quite a mature process node, but still, they're ticking along nicely. Um, and uh, another die mark over here telling us the uh, number of uh, layers on the assembly. Uh, you can see M7. That stands for metal. Uh, M8, well, obviously metal. Eighth layer of metal. Uh, the A0, A0 again, first uh, die success, so uh, typical things. Uh, if you're wondering what these um, uh, square little boxes are, it's uh, basically uh, infill, um, much like you would do on a circuit board, uh, but uh, here done microscopically on a, a, a die. Uh, when you have no metal, you want to actually balance it out for uh, etching purposes. Okay, so if we take this uh, top metal layer off, uh, you get a picture that looks like this. It's known as the diffusion or polysilicon layer. Uh, why don't we uh, go back to the section that was all covered up by the power distribution network. And uh, you can see uh, a bunch of regular rectangles and then some what looks like uh, gray schmear in the middle. Uh, the parts on the outside here are uh, SRAM. Uh, these are laid out as blocks. The darker ones uh, probably are the ROMs here. And if I just zoom in, uh, you're not going to see very much. It looks kind of gray and indistinct, but there's the, the sea of gates that are uh, rendered. We don't see it here because the resolution of the photograph is far too inferior to be able to pick out those sorts of details. Um, if we just pop back to the full metal layer, uh, if we go up to the section here where they didn't put any metal layer onto it, um, that's because that's the USB Phi. I'll just zoom into the, uh, the block here and we take a longer look at it. USB 5s are relatively tricky designs, and they're very carefully laid out, so we see it was placed uh, uh, here on the assembly. It, it matches the same one used on the uh, the Pico. Coming over just to the right, we see uh, what looks like a voltage regulator, um, if I understand the data sheet correctly. I'm not quite sure why they put a voltage regulator on here, um, on die, uh, because... Um, Normally you would expect you to do that in the, the uh, PMIC, on the power supply circuitry externally. This is a 40 nanometer process node, so the silicon's more expensive than it would be at 200 nanometers where most PMICs are done. Um, however, I'm sure there's some sophistication going on with the power uh, that I'm not yet quite sorted out. If we zoom it a little bit, I think the, there's four, four ADCs on this uh, assembly, and uh, they are undoubtedly uh, uh, controlled by the block uh, here. I'm just going to sketch it out. There's some blocks in here. 
Uh, what else can we see? Uh, on the uh, edges of the peripheral, that's of course where all the bond pads were, the I.O. And you can see things were kind of in a very regular pattern. Um, in fact, if we look at this group of four here, uh, if you were to open the data sheet, you would find the, uh, the GPIOs are grouped in blocks of four. And undoubtedly, these are the pins that provide uh, that capability. So this is a very typical uh, 40 nanometer uh, process. Um, and um, in some ways, quite a well-understood and straightforward design. Um, if you're looking for the CPUs, uh, they're going to be in this gray schmear. Um, the actual CPUs at 100 megahertz sort of class, uh, they'll just get rendered as a, a, an array of gates and then placed down into this, this area here. They probably won't have anything unique to them. Well, very good. Let's uh, push on. Okay, let's take a look at the uh, power system on the uh, Pico 2. Uh, it's all based upon a single integrated circuit sitting here. It's got a couple of associated capacitors, an inductor, and it looks like there's a protection diode here. It comes in from the uh, USB port. A little more sophisticated than is expecting. It's based upon a rich tech uh, RT6150. But it's interesting enough, it's a buck boost converter. Now, from a USB connection, it's always going to be 5 volts, but um, this thing is going to accept a uh, voltage lower than the 3.3 volts it's going to uh, output, and one that's slightly higher. So I presume this would allow you to do battery-powered uh, assemblies quite easily, because you don't need to put that 5 volts from the USB in. I'm not quite sure why they just didn't put down a, a buck converter, though. Uh, no matter, uh, if you take off the packaging, you can see the typical structures of a modern voltage regulator. Uh, good portion of the die is basically transistors on the top and on the bottom uh, in the sort of pinky color is basically the uh, give me a voltage reference and then all of the logic to create uh, the function that's desired. Again if you can strip the metal off it's a bit of a partial strip here to get it quite clean but uh, you can see the typical structures of a large transistor sitting below. Okay uh, last semiconductor on this assembly is a Quad SPI always causes me amusement when I hear that name. Uh, SPI, of course, stands for Serial Peripheral Interface. Uh, eventually, though, the bitstream became too slow, so they started adding more bitstreams to it, so they called it Quad. But, of course, once you have a parallel bus, it's a bit, well, no matter. Quad SPI. Um, there's going to be a memory array uh, under this here. I should probably not under anything. You can actually see the volume looking. And then the uh, voltage boost and uh, control will be under here. Let's just uh, take that metal off and get to the next picture here, which will be the um, uh, polysilicon. And sure enough, you can see the uh, the page arrays of the memory. You can see them, the range and columns. If you look closer, they, then they're arranged to little blocks here. And, and that count will actually match what the data sheet says. Uh, on the top side is a voltage boosting regulator. That's what all these analog electronic capacitors are for. To program an E squared PROM, you need to generate tens of volts, so it's all done on die. And then uh, down in the lower portion is a lot of digital logic, uh, which of course provides that uh, quad SPI interface. Very typical. All right, uh, just jumping back to the RP2350, the main integrated circuit. Uh, this is a picture of the ROM here. You can see uh, columns and, and rows. Uh, a bit indistinct. Uh, there's a trick you can do in GIMP where you adjust the curve after you take a photograph on a microscope to help tease out uh, some better details. Uh, but um, I suspect actually the ROM pattern itself uh, is uh, probably encoded in the metal layer. The reason I mention this is they, uh, they have a contest going where um, if you can read a secret out of the ROM, I think they have a little prize going. Uh, a physical attack actually is a fairly successful approach. However, you have to do selective mail, uh, selective uh, metal uh, delayering, which is actually somewhat sophisticated. But I suspect you could take the secret out that way. So, just an amusement. All right, well, why don't we take a look at the circuit board and see if we can start down anything of interest. Uh, the connections for the edge card are all golden. Uh, that's because it is gold. Uh, it's called an Enig or Electroless Nickel Immersion Gold Finish. Well, it may even be a hard gold finish. Very appropriate, of course, because you handle a circuit board. You don't want to have corrosion, which makes it then hard to solder on the cutters. Uh, the part that we didn't talk about at all, of course, was the uh, 25 megahertz crystal sitting in this uh, silver package here. Uh, very typical. Uh, a lot of people complaining about the connector being micro USB. Oh. Yeah, micro USB, yes. Uh, rather than uh, the um, USB C. Um, however, I believe there's a definite cost advantage with micro USB. And uh, 
quite frankly, uh, this board does not draw a lot of power. If you flip it over, uh, there are no components, uh, but um, there are definitely a few things you can see of interest. Um, the board was manufactured in the 25th week of 24, which is June. Here I have a completed assembly in my hand in August, so a rapid build through. You always want to look at the build through of a company to see how fast their inventory is moving. Not hugely surprising, there's massively fast build through uh, with Raspberry. Um, very successful company and obviously a hot new assembly. Uh, QR code here is used for traceability, which is uh, very important to uh, see that. It implies a lot of process control when you see that on a circuit board. Uh, UL marking here uh, regarding, of course, safety. Uh, I have no doubt there's lots of safety to be had uh, from this company, uh, well-regarded firm. So there we go, uh, a neat assembly. Um, it's going to be certainly interesting to see what they do next. Uh, they've obviously demonstrated they can do 40 nanometer uh, processors. They obviously listen to their customers pretty carefully and produce the Pico 2 with all sorts of interesting things. I'm sure that's directly from customer feedback. Uh, where they go next will be certainly interesting. Um, if you're a fan of computer history, it's fun to watch uh, Raspberry Pi um, in the early days of compute. Uh, England and uh, Britain was very much in the forefront. Um, and uh, now to see, of course, this uh, this chip here is, of course, all, almost all the IP comes from a company called ARM, uh, very British indeed, uh, and of course, uh, Raspberry. So, neat company. Certainly fun products to turn out. Hope you like that. Uh, if you want to take a look at the pictures of the silicon die, I have them on my blog, electronupdate.blogspot.com. Those files are very large, 50 or so megabytes. Uh, lots of details, maybe photographs, semiconductors.